I remember this commercial when I was a kid that claimed the Earth gets enough power from the sun every day to power all the homes in the U.S. for a year. True or not, all that sunlight is wasted if we can't capture it. Quantum tech to the rescue! Hey, purveyors of sunshine and rainbows, I'm Trace. Thanks for giving us a shine here on DNews. Photovoltaic cells would seem to be one of the future-proof technologies of the energy revolution. We're absorbing energy from the sun, and we're using it as electricity. The properties of photovoltaics were first discovered in 1873, but here we are, 150 years later, and they're still an inefficient and minor source of power. Part of the reason is solar panels are just not efficient at sucking up sun droppings. According to the shockley Kweiser limit, a single layer of solar cells in ideal conditions could theoretically be about 33.7% efficient. That's really bad, you guys. But recently, a few newer studies have discovered ways to boost their efficiency by incorporating subatomic particles. For example, some advanced solar panels use super small components called nanowires. They're also known as quantum wires. They're just what they sound like, really, really tiny wires. They are cylindrical with a diameter of one ten thousandth the width of a human hair. That's even smaller than some actual wavelengths of light coming from the sun. In a paper in Nature Photonics announced, when nanowires are placed atop solar cells, the tiny wires interact with that sunlight, resonating the energy like a tuning fork and causing it to condense. That concentrated sunlight is then sent to the photovoltaic cell, increasing efficiency 15 times, way past the theoretical limit. This salmon is getting hot, literally. In addition to that, nanowires can be used to harvest heat energy too, turning the photovoltaic cells into thermal photovoltaic cells. Normally, solar cells lose most of the sun's energy in the form of heat, as much as 90% of it, but a team at Berkeley has discovered a metamaterial that captures both the light and heat doubling the efficiency of normal cells. The material uses nanoscopic structures of gold and magnesium fluoride, and when light hits them, the energy radiates as heat in any direction they choose. Think of it like a tiny sorting machine made of mirrors, because the structures are so small, 12,000 of them could fit on a cross-section of a human hair. The nanostructures can be engineered to split the energy in sunlight, sending different wavelengths to different energy collectors. Normally, though, Panels are on roofs or in fields, which is because they're opaque. They block the sunlight from going anywhere else, so we may as well put them out of the way. But a paper in Nature Nanotechnology is proposing a new solution, using quantum dots to redirect the sunlight off of regular windows. Quantum dots can be 50 atoms across, so they can sit on a regular double-paned window and you would never even know they were there. It would take three million of them in a row to cross the width of a human thumb. Within their nanostructures, the dots absorb some of the light hitting the glass and then redirect it as heat to collectors in the window frame. This could hide the panels and make any window a potential solar energy collector. Right now, though, each of these technologies does have a problem. Cost. Nano wires are hard to make, and the current generation of quantum dots are made of toxic heavy metals. The Nature Nanotech paper claims the dots can be made with organic and non-toxic materials, which is great for household use, but as usual, more research is needed, meaning more money is needed. Overall, though, after 150 years, it would seem that solar cells are finally close to having their time in the sun. If you're interested in how efficient solar panels are in comparison to other things, make sure you check out this video about the efficiency of various types of power plants. Traditionally, power plants usually use heat to create steam and move turbines. Those turbines generate the electric current. I bet you're as curious as I was about which plants are more efficient than 46%, but these solar panels are actually doing better than a lot of other plants. What do you guys think, though? Is solar the future, or are you more into wind or nuclear? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you keep coming back here for more DNews, and we'll see you next time.